Radio Cobalt. Hey guys, uh, hello and welcome to episode 4 of Radio Cobalt. It's Owen here and I'm joined by... Pontus and Daniel. And Daniel, they, these are the developers on Cobalt, so you're getting the information straight from the developer's mouth. Or so, mouth. So to speak. Yeah, indeed. So, we've discussed many aspects of Cobalt in the previous episodes, and in this one we thought we'd go into more detail about online competitive play. Pontus, why is Cobalt so much fun in multiplayer? Why is it so much fun? Yeah, well, that's a that's uh, an easy question to answer, I would say. Uh, it is fun because there's so many modes of uh, defeating your enemies. And also, as I've said many times before, it's fun even if you don't. Even if you die, it's fun to die as well. You seem to talk a lot about enjoying dying, Pontus. Is this <laughs> some kind of message about your playstyle? <laughs> oh, it is deliberate death again. Uh, well, yeah, well, it's sort of morbid i guess but it, it's it's a hobby of mine <laughs> <laughs> i just like being sorry so carry on yeah. let, let's well uh, we could talk a bit about our just as a demonstration our, our favorite modes of, of killing uh, our, our our enemies yeah sure Daniel, what's, what's your favorite i mean when i pontus is getting cocky and he tries to beat me i like to make a really precise roll with a grenade charged up and then I like to toss it across the entire map so that it perfectly explodes in his face. Wow, that's actually exactly what I was gonna say. That's my <laughs> absolutely favorite so, so way of the killing thing, anyone. <laughs> the thing with throwing grenades is it's not just a case of looking at your enemy and throwing a grenade in Cobalt. There's a kind of distance you can throw a grenade kind of naturally so to speak. But well, definitely you can just push the button and throw it, but yeah. that will only get it so far. Uh, there is a physical element to it uh, as well. I mean, uh, Cobalt, uh, it's its uh, a lot about rolling. If, you, if you're if you watching the video right now or you've played it, you, you'll know it's uh, Cobalt. It's, uh, that's how I roll. That's our, our motto. And when you sort of use that roll in a, a grenade throw, you can get it further. It's just simple Newtonic physics. And it's really satisfying to get it right. Hmm. So, so basically, just standing still, tossing it, gets it one length. Running forward and jumping and tossing it, gets it another. And then running forward, jumping and rolling and releasing in the roll, gets it even further. See, I, I like I like that that kind of the way there's a skill ceiling to even throwing a grenade. You know, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, and that's why I think you can play it with people who are kind of similar level to you when you have a cool match and it's really fun. But you can also get in these kind of matches where everyone's using these elite kind of tactics, you know, and you can even get, end up killing the guys who are using the elite tactics quite easily as well, but it kind of, it adds an element of panache, a bit of style to the way people can play. Definitely. What other cool ways are there which you can kill people? Well, let's talk about the uh, the defense against the uh, uh, the grenade of doom coming from Daniel this time. <laughs> I would uh, well, I would wait for the slowdown effect to kick in, which happens when the grenade is coming closer. Uh, I would switch to my fist or my melee weapon, and I would punch the grenade. Hopefully, uh, getting out of harm's way. Uh, Ideally, punching it back to Daniel. Yeah, but since I time it so perfectly, that's not going to be possible. I mean, the getting it back all the way to me. All right. All that right, sounds right. silly. No. Uh, let, let's. Let's. <laughs> that sounds silly. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> that's a silly, unlikely scenario. But it's, you will definitely get it out of harm's way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll buy that. Talking talking about grenades, another one fun thing with Cobalt is that all the pickups are destructible even other grenades. So if you throw a grenade at a, a, a grenade that's on the ground, it will explode as well as sort of creating a, a chain uh, effect. Mm -hmm. And that's especially fun if you throw it on one of the larger grenades, uh, the, the thermal bomb that will uh, set off chaos throughout the whole map. Nice. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite things to do is, is I think it's a lot simpler die. than <laughs> simpler <laughs> than your die, yeah. A lot simpler than your guys' techniques, I think. It's, you can you can simply deflect a bullet by rolling. Yep. Now, 
the thing is, because time slows down so much when the bullet comes within the vicinity of your player, it's actually quite easy to kind of roll and deflect the bullet back. I mean, you end up in these close-range encounters where a guy will kind of... I mean, another thing, you can jump and you can slide along the ground. So a guy can jump, slide on the ground, shoot a bullet, the other guy rolls, bounces it back to the first guy, who then rolls back, bounces the bullet, deflects the bullet back, and takes out the original guy he was aiming at. So these little moments, like it sounds like, oh, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, It'll take ages to pull off, but you can do this stuff really quickly and easily, and it kind of it happens every you know few seconds, yeah, which is which is super cool. I mean, this also segues into another favorite strategy of mine, which is forcing the roll and then uh, and trapping him with the grenade. Yeah, which is <laughs> you basically shoot at the at whoever your target is. Hopefully they will try to roll then instead of uh, jumping aside or something, which forces them into like they're they're in a roll and they can't abort the roll. So you quickly plant a little grenade in the path of their rolling, yeah. and hopefully they will explode. I mean, the, the, when players and uh, when when people start playing Cobalt, like the first minute, what happens is that they're just running around dying. But then you show them the the roll button. And they understand that that's a basic game mechanic for kobolds. Then they start rolling all over the place, and they realize, well, this is fun, but also, is this all I'm gonna do now? Roll around and deflect bullets? But at the, at the next tier, you realize that there's a strategy to forcing someone into a roll or to timing uh, a shot so that you hit the player at the end of a roll or at the beginning of a roll. So they're, they're, it's not only about rolling around and deflecting all the time. Uh, there, there are strategies to, to counter the running as well, which makes it really, really fun. Also, some weapons are really high rate, rate of fire, and you usually want to be able to lay down a lot of bullets towards the enemy. So if you manage to dodge bullets coming at you instead of rolling, you can keep aiming at them for a longer period of time, which makes your sort of bullet output a lot higher than if you would just be spinning and shooting in all directions around you. So that also comes into play, like when you should know when not to roll and just try to dodge instead, just to keep the bullets going down range. Another thing about the kind of um, the mechanics of it, I think if you look, if you watch the footage, you might kind of think that Cobalt works like a kind of twin stick thing where you're kind of manually aiming all your, all your shots. But in fact, what happens is you kind of have a certain degree of, of, of lock on, don't you want the other characters? How does that work and why did you put that in? Well, I, I think early on we didn't even have roll. It was only basically just shoot straight forward, jump, get to the same level as your enemy, and then shoot a basic platformer shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, when we added rolling, uh, it became pretty obvious that it was hard to aim within a roll. So to that, we added an auto aim option, like when or option, it's, it's actually on. Yeah. Uh, when you're in a certain angle, towards your enemy, the gun will aim towards that enemy with a certain delay depending on your suit and depending on your, your uh, yeah. weapon and stuff like that. We also added the auto-aiming when you duck or when you when you stand in a certain way. So instead of, of being like a sort of WASD mouse aim sort of thing, it's more of a timing thing. You time your shot within the roll when the weapon has locked on. So it's a lot about timing and just getting the timing right. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it feels kind of unique and you can pull off these awesome things. Like you could easily jump from a platform and kind of headshot the guy below you with, yeah. the, with the correct gun if you kind of time it correctly. I mean, they can obviously evade that shot, but it kind of balances itself out and makes it feel really dynamic and fun. Yeah. Okay, so uh, online mode, the online mode wasn't actually implemented in early builds of Cobalt. Um, why was that? Well, as Pondo said before, we never intended it for it to be even a local multiplayer game. It was supposed to be a Singapore project from the very beginning, which yeah. in retrospect is of course sad, because I would have loved to have it from the start now. Because it's it's, it's become trickier to kind of retrofit the, the online, I guess, in the multiplayer game. Yeah, adding multiplayer to an already existing code base is just always a struggle in itself and a challenge. Um, but we are sort of, we're dealing with facing it head on. And specifically in Cobalt's case, there are 
lots of gameplay elements which are an interesting challenge in themselves to synchronize. Uh, many games that uh, create uh, a competitive online environment have either focus on dodging projectiles or hitting projectiles. Uh, I'd say the other cases where that is not accurate is like games like Street Fighter or uh, any basically fighting game where you have to hit and dodge uh, all the moves all the time. Uh, but they use a very specific kind of online synchronization, which sort of depends on a very, very tight game state. So, uh, very few things to change and roll back and, and synchronize. Uh, while Cobalt has, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 projectiles flying around and bullet time everywhere and grenades exploding. And timing it. And time and and uh, exactly and so uh, the, the challenge with Cobalt is that you want to um, dodge bullets and you want to hit bullets and both of those uh, performances are very dependent on timing, rolling the, the millisecond before you get hit by a bullet or shooting the millisecond where your gun is aiming in the right direction in a roll. Uh, so synchronizing all that with latency, uh, that's the, the big challenge. It's something that we've been looking forward to, uh, or looking, or hoping to have for a very, very long time. So, so uh, I think both me and Daniel are, are just excited to, to to try at least and have it work out. Because uh, personally, I believe it's it's gonna be pretty awesome. Together. Sweet. Uh, and don't forget, guys, that there's a there's a build of Cobalt you can play now for PC and Mac, which includes. Local multiplayer modes, along with uh, little snippets of the other modes. I think we've got some challenges in there and some single-player campaign. Um, it's already it's in early. Well, are you calling it beta? Alpha. Alpha now at the moment. So, but yeah, you can check that out right now. And if you prefer to wait for the finished versions, then you will be able to get it on Xbox 360, PS3, Mac, and PC sometime this year. And of course, if you if you um, buy into it now, you you'll get the full version. PC that is. Uh, yeah. PC PC and Mac are separate from yeah. the console versions. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks, dudes. Well, yeah. Have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait. You gonna say oh wait. I should say something. You should, you do normally interject wait, at this wait. stage. I have something to say. Okay. And this is uh, one of my favorite ways to uh, slaughter Pontus. Right. And that is, I like to uh, trap him in a corner with a clone. And it's you know it's not a sophisticated way. It's not very um, complicated. It's just very satisfactory because you know when that clone lands and he's like in that corner, you know it's just a. Uh, you know, he's he's doomed basically. It's he's a matter good. of time. He gets it's pushed. A prolonged <laughs> killing. <laughs> yeah, he gets pushed up in the corner by the lightning bolt, and then it just gets heated up slowly to his inevitable uh, so overheated you have time death. To actually, look over your shoulder and look at my teary eyes. Yes, and he's like, "Yep, you guys have some I issues. I got you. <laughs> Serious issues. Okay, thanks, guys. See you Bye. next time. Bye.